and welcome to this video presentation on discrete signals. Um, in this one I'm going to show you how to create a signal using MATLAB. Uh, it's the second example of synthesizing signals in MATLAB. In this one I'm going to use this mathematical expression um, for my continuous signal that I'd like to create. So let's say x of t equal to cos 2t plus e to the minus t over 10. Okay. Uh, so that's the signal that I'd like to create. Um, now before go moving on, you should really have a good view of what the signal looks like uh, before um, trying to synthesize it, because you'll need to work out the sampling period, which is the key thing really when it comes to synthesizing signals. Um, so we, we're, we've got two components basically. We've got a cosine component with a, an exponential decay component. So let's look at each one of those individually first. And the cosine component will start off at some time, at, well, at time t equal to zero, it'll have a value of one. So this is time versus amplitude. Uh, so it'll be value of one, and it'll be some shape like that. Not a great drawing. But, um, well, I haven't put in my time axis yet. Well, that'll be a value of one for my amplitude axis. And the time axis so will be zero and around there will be minus one. I just draw the axis further down like that. And um, the frequency of this cosine waveform or cos sinusoid, the frequency of the sinusoid will be about 0.3 hertz. So it will take um, it'll take three seconds to get one cycle. So let's see that's one two cycles, roughly three cycles there, so that'll be roughly nine seconds. Now I'm just sketching this out quickly rather than doing a detailed sketch, just to get a rough idea of what the sampling rate I should use is. Um, let's, now let's focus on the second part here, it's an exponential decay. And my exponential decay will have an initial amplitude, well substituting t equal to zero, um, that would give me a value of 1, so it will be initially value of 1, so sorry, that should be a tick with 1, and that will decay gradually over time. Now the time constant associated with this is um, 10, so it will take roughly about 50 seconds to reach 0, so I'll just put 50 here, so after 50 seconds it should reach 0, or approximately 0. So. That's a rough sketch of the exponential part. Now, um, what we really want to do is also draw, well, the overall waveform. So, let's see, well, at time t equal to zero, um, we'll have a value of, well, when we add these two together, we have one plus one, so it'll start off at an amplitude of two. Okay, and it will finish up after 50 seconds, and this is going to be difficult to sketch out, but uh, I hope you will um, be understanding of my uh, capabilities of drawing this out. Um, so let's try to sketch it out. So over 50 seconds. So we'll t what I'd imagine will happen is it'll it will be a, 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 a sinusoidal waveform that will gradually decay. Now I'm going to have difficulty drawing this out, but. Uh, start off at 1 and it'll be an exponential decay like this, oh, that's not great but and eventually we will around the 50 mark we should get down to to 0 close to 0. That's not a great sketch now, but I'll do a much better job when we move into MATLAB but the idea, the overall shape we can see this ex or this co sinusoidal part is gradually reducing over time um, now the amplitude of the cosine part doesn't change, it's just the amplitude of the overall signal is being affected by the exponential part. Okay, well hopefully you get a, a rough understanding about uh, what it is we're trying to, to produce. Um, now, we need to work out an appropriate sampling period in order to create this signal because remember we're going to create a, a discrete signal, x of n. And that discrete signal is going to be equal to x rounded bracket by n of t. Okay, so really that's going to work out to be then of cos. So substituting n by t, n is my sample number, 
t is my sampling period. Substituting into this equation, it'll be cos 2n of t plus e to the minus n t over 10. Okay. Um, so that's that's my expression that I'm going to solve. So I'm going to solve this expression for different values of n. So I'm going to solve that expression for n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. For as many samples as I need. Okay. Um, but I need to work out what this value variable t is. This is key. If I don't get this variable t, my sampling period, correct, then I won't have an accurate representation of the signal. So, well, let's imagine I chose a value of t equal to, um, let's see, let's imagine we chose it equal to maybe four, uh, four seconds. Okay, so let's let's imagine we chose it equal to four seconds. So, let's see, around four. I'm just roughly doing this. This may not be too accurate. There's four, and there's eight, and we've also sampled at time t equal to zero. So. No, that wasn't great. We'll just just looking at that. We'll say t equal to zero. That must be four, and that might be eight. Okay, that might be a slightly better. Um, so if if I sampled at every four seconds, I'd get each of these green dots. Which, if you draw a line but along them, it's not a very good representation of my signal. So we know four seconds isn't good enough. Um, Let's try a different higher sampling rate. Well, I think if I captured it at each one of these green dots, that would seem reasonable. At least it's better. Okay. But we might use that as a minimum, roughly, as a guide uh, for working out what a, a good sampling period would be. It would want to be at least this rate, I, th I think. Now, there actually is a way of calculating the, the optimum sampling rate, but we're not getting into that at, at this point in time. But just visually, if I connected each of those green dots together, I'd have a reasonable representation of the original continuous signal, x of t. And what period is that? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, well, should be 12, 13 samples over a 9 sec second period. So um, let's say it's roughly Point seven, uh, point point seven hertz. That's what that roughly looks like. So zero point seven, uh, or sorry, sampling period of of zero point seven. So t equal to zero point seven would seem to be appropriate. You know, now that mightn't be the best. I might actually say, well, let's use that as a guideline. A minimum of zero point seven. Let's or sorry, a maximum of, of 0 0.7. Let's um, let's maybe not use that and maybe use a much higher one. We'll use maybe uh, 0 0.01. Might be a better representation. Now it'll give me more samples. So with 0 0.01, I'd have far more samples, which would give me a better representation again. But really, the overall process there, what I was doing there was to get to start off with some idea about what an appropriate sampling period is. And then I've increased it a bit just because I want to get a better visualization of the signal. And the more samples I have, the better the visualization I'll have. Okay. Um, so now that we've worked out our sampling period t, I'm going to use this, which is a sampling rate of 100 hertz. Um, I should be able to generate my signal no problem in MATLAB. So let's just switch over to MATLAB now. So um, let's set t equal to 0 0.01. I'm doing this slightly differently from the previous value, and I, I might just run through how I, how I did it in the previous case as well. Um, and we want to work it out for a number of samples n. So what samples do we want to, to calculate? Uh, let's switch back to the drawing area. Um, now just to represent it, we'll do it for over 50 seconds. Uh, over 50 seconds, and we should see the signal decay down to close to zero um, over a 50 second period. So, uh, 50 second period, how many samples over 50 second period? Well, we have 100 samples every second, so over a 50 second period, we'd have um, 5,000. So, if I go from n equal to zero up to 
5,000. And we'll just say in steps of 1 here, now you could actually leave this out, the, the 1 part of MATLAB, it defaults to 1. That will give me all my values of n. So I should have from n, n is 0 to 5,000. We'll just, just show those numbers. So there's 5,000 values there. Starts off at, at n equal to 0 and goes through 5,000 of them. Okay. And there they all are. Anyway. Um, now, the, the important part. We want to create our signal x. And that's going to be equal to cos of 2 by n by t plus cos, or sorry, x by minus t, div oh sorry, minus n by capital T divided by 10. And that's the signal that I wanted to create, and I will plot x. And there it is. Huh. See, it gradually decays over time. So that's that's basically it. Um, I will show you the previous way I've done it. The previous time I I, I did it, uh, so in example number one, I worked out a variable times that I wanted to evaluate the expression. Um, I might call it sample times. So in that in the previous example, I would have said sample times equals to zero up to the time that I was interested in which was 50 seconds, in steps of the sampling period, 0 0.01. So we would have created that variable. And then I would have evaluated my expression. I'll call it x2 is equal to um, cos of 2 by sample times plus x minus sample times divided by 10. Okay, that's right. And I'll plot a new figure. I would plot x2, which should be the same. In fact, I should have plotted one over the other. We'll hold on. And we plot x in red x's, just to show them. So there's the two signals, and I can uh, I've just evaluated them in slightly different ways and we can zoom in and they should be exactly the same. The red axis should sit right on the blue. So there we go. Um, okay, thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next presentation.